Between 1789 and 1794, the cries of freedom, equality, brotherhood rang out across France, not in peace, but in conflict. There was to be much bloodshed and anguish before the slogan ran its course and bridged the divide between the wealthy and the impoverished of a country where anger and hatred were out of control. Through this turmoil, a 19-year-old girl watched in grief as her brothers were unfairly and brutally executed. But it was their dying cries of forgive which made the greater impact and led the young Claudine to start a revolution of her own. She knew that the only way to heal the festering wounds of a country that had turned its back on God was to make the love of Jesus and Mary known. How better to do this than to reach out to those in need? Claudine's enthusiasm and example soon attracted other women who visited working-class families afflicted by unemployment and poverty. The turning point came when Father André Coindre, the newly appointed curate, brought two little girls aged two and four to Claudine. They had been abandoned on the steps of a church in the freezing cold of winter. From year on, the number of children kept increasing. There was urgent need for a dedicated home, and they finally moved from temporary shelter to Le Angelique at Fauvier. Under the direction of Father Coindre, Claudine and her associates formed a community which soon graduated to become the Congregation of the Religious of Jesus and Mary. Claudine, who took the name Mother Saint Ignatius, was unanimously chosen as Superior General. The apostolic aim of the congregation was the Christian education of all social classes with a preference for children and young girls, particularly the poor. It required tremendous effort, but Claudine's perseverance was rooted in her confidence in God. This helped her guide the young congregation through good times and bad, right up to her death on February 3rd, 1837. Her very last words were, How good God is!